hello there. Um, Mr. Allen's busy right now, but uh, you may go in. Oh, hello. Just in time. Did you ever see one of these gadgets before? It's a tape recorder. Yeah, it records sound like a phonograph record, then you can play it right back. Oh, I'm sorry, this is Lieutenant Evans. Don't be sorry, we've met. Miss Rogers. Mr. Ronald Lewis. How do you do? And Mr. Goofy Madden. Miss Rogers and these gentlemen are going to help us solve the murder of Clayton Kimball, the novelist. Maybe you've read some of Kimball's mystery stories. If you haven't, you haven't missed anything. Mr. Kimball didn't hold the police in very high regard. In his stories, he pictured them as somewhat stupid. Look, that guy. It's easy enough to solve murders when you dream them up out of your own head, when they really happen. I agree with you. Kimball was shot to death a week ago last Sunday evening at his home out north of town. The crime was discovered after a neighbor phoned the police and complained about the persistent barking of Kimball's dog. When a patrolman went to investigate, no one answered his knock. Then when he tried to open the front door... <coughs> rather than harm the dog, the patrolman started around at the back door. On the way, he saw something that made him put in a call to Lieutenant Evans of the Homicide Division. <coughs> Miss Kelly and I arrived at the house about half an hour later. Hi, Steve. Hello, Pat. I thought they had me trapped in there. Door kind of sticks. We found him in here. Now, right over here is the window where the uh, officer looked in and saw the body. Mm -hmm. You said the patrolman saw a man leap out of the window and run away. Yeah, but that's a concrete driveway out there. Naturally, no footprints. What about the dog? Locked up in the kennel out in the yard. You know, we had to get a guy from the Humane Society to handle it. If you'll come over here, show you what we got to work with. See this broken teacup hmm. and this one? That just means there were two people present. So we know he didn't murder himself and jump out the window. That's right. Oh, now look, Pat. Can I be the detective this time? Well, sure. <laughs> Thanks. Anyway, we know whoever it was smoked a lot of cigarettes. Unless Kimball smoked them all himself. Hey, Steve. Hmm? Huh? Not bad, huh? Wow. With love to the best client a literary agent ever had, Kay Rogers. <laughs> Look who she's got next door to her. That's Goofy Madden. He used to be a gangster. I know. Hmm. Well, I wonder what he used this gadget for. He probably dictated his stories into it. Mm hmm? Let's see what gives. To the police. This is Clayton Kimball. I have just been shot, and I know that I am dying. You police have always resented the fact that I have called you stupid in my stories. All right, if you're not stupid, let's see you solve my murder. I'm going to give you all the clues. Then, if you're bright enough to put the pieces together, you'll know who killed me. <laughs> Ready, coppers? All right, get this. Just before the shot was fired, the killer, my best friend and myself, had spent a pleasant evening together. Who was the killer? <laughs> well, listen, it's as simple as the police force. The killer was one of these three people. The first was stealing from me and didn't want to be found out. Got that, cops? The second became too important and was fired. Am I going too fast for you? All right, then. The third double-crossed me and became too friendly with my best friend. Three suspects. Count them if you can count. I've given you the motives of each, and I've even told you who the killer is. <laughs> now let's see you so-called brilliant detectives get to work. I'll be watching you from heaven. <laughs> and there aren't any flat feet up there. If the stupid police force thinks it can solve this, it's got an... <coughs> That's that. Better pack this thing up. Hey, you know something? 
This whole thing's a gag. Kimball took this stunt out of one of his own stories. Only in the book, the murdered guy talked into a dictaphone. And in the book, did the police solve the murder? Pat, you're going to drive me right to my grave. Well, it's better than having to walk. I don't think there's anything else for you to do, Lieutenant. You might as well beat it. All right. I'll take this with you. Okay. What if I got everything? Everything but the meaning of those clues. Don't worry your pretty blonde little head. I'll get it. Well, you better. Kimbo said he'd be watching you from heaven. But if you don't get it, I'll ask him about it when I get there. What if he isn't in heaven? Then you ask him. Oh. Mm. <laughs> One of these days he's going to explode. I wonder where the phone is in this place. In the hall, I guess. Smart girl. You, uh, you kind of scared me. Really? Yeah, yeah. See, uh, don't I know you? Maybe. I know you. You're oh. Goofy Madden. <laughs> sure, everybody knows me, but... Uh, I'm Steve Allen. Oh, the prosecutor. Sure. <laughs> sure. You're kind of funny, ain't it, us? Uh, meeting this way. You know your office sent me up once. You here to see uh, Clay Kimball? Yes, in a way. Well, I guess, uh, guess he ain't around, huh? No, I uh, guess he ain't. I work for Kimball, you know that, don't you? I've given him some dope on a book he's writing. Clay says I've got a, uh, a colorful vocabulary. He had me talking into a recorder. What's he... the real reason you're here? Well, I just told you, didn't I? Clay's writing a book. As a matter of fact, it's the, uh, <laughs> the story of my life. I said the real reason. Okay. Okay, so I did work for Kimball. Well, if he didn't get along, so good, he fired me. He pay off like he said he would, so I dropped around to get what's coming to me, that's all. Did you, uh, did you know he'd been murdered? Murdered? Hey, wait a minute, bud. Who's kidding who? Well, so that's your act, huh? That's why you was waiting here for me. You figured to make me the fall guy, huh? You figured to pin a murder rap on me. I didn't say you killed him. Brother, you ain't even gonna get a chance to see him. Better put that gun away, man. Look who's talking. Your office framed you once. Framed me on a hold-up rap. You ain't gonna get a chance to send me up on no murder rap. I'm gonna let you have what's coming to you, bud. And here it comes. <laughs> Sure, but I didn't kill him. You gotta believe me, Ellen. You gotta believe me. Goofy Madden was taken into custody for illegal possession of a weapon and assault with intent to kill. He has since been held by the police. Sure, but you couldn't pin Kimball's killer on me. I got an alibi. I can prove where I was when it happened. How do you know when it happened? Well, that. Uh, I read it in the papers, copy. Speaking of papers, I wonder if you've seen this. It came out the day after the murder. And here's one that came out a couple of days ago. Police still stymied by author's clues, baffled by writer's tips on own murder. 
See, the newspapers haven't been any kinder to the police than Clayton Kimball was. Yeah, I'd like to see those newspaper guys figure out that recording. I'd like to tell you what happened when I visited Kay Rogers, the literary agent, the day after the murder. I know it's difficult for you to talk about Mr. Kimball, Miss Rogers, but it's necessary. You're his literary agent, I believe. I was his agent, yes. He discharged me last week. Oh, why? I don't know. When I first met Clay, he was a nobody. I built him up, made him a success. Just a couple of weeks ago, I arranged a new contract with Lewis and Fraser, the publishers. You must have had some reason for discharging him. I think perhaps he resented the part I played in his success. Is there anything else you want to know, Mr. Allen? Yes, two things. Where can I find a copy of that contract that Kimball signed? I don't have one here. Maybe there's one at his house. I'll have a look tonight. What was the other thing? Miss Rogers, were you in love with Mr. Kimball? Well, you don't have to tell me. I can guess that you were. What's going on here, Kay? Is this fellow annoying you? It's all right, Ron. This is Mr. Allen, the public prosecutor. Mr. Allen, this is Mr. Lewis of Lewis and Fraser. How do you do? I came here... Yes, you came to see what you could find out about Clayton Kimball. Well, Miss Rogers knew nothing of his private affairs. From what I've heard about those affairs, I'm glad she didn't. And you can get out of this office. Relax, Mr. Lewis. You're full of nerves. Have a cigarette. I don't smoke. Now, if you don't get out of here, I'll... don't! Don't worry, he won't. Thanks very much for the information, Mr. Lewis. I didn't give you any information. Oh, yes. You told me a great deal. So, while you didn't know it at the time, Lewis, you did give me some information. Until then, I hadn't realized that you were in love with Miss Rogers. And not only in love, but insanely jealous. I found that out in Miss Rogers' office. Yeah, that's the way it goes when you're working on a case like this. Sometimes you pick up a little information here, a little there, put it together, and sometimes you come up with the answer. We didn't have the complete answer just then, but we had a good start. That evening, Pat and I went out to Kimball's house and looked for the contract he'd signed with Lewis and Frazier. Find anything? Nothing but notes and pages of manuscripts. I wonder if he kept his business papers upstairs. That's a thought. I'm going to take a look. You finish up with the desk. All right. my secretary more than he does. <laughs> oh, I see you found the contract. Yeah, let's go. I think we've got everything we need now. All right. Yes, we have everything we need to prove who killed Clayton Kimball, except for one thing. What one thing is that? Let me show you what we do have. We have Kimball's contract with Lewis and Frazier. We have the full ashtray found in Kimball's study, the teapot and the two teacups, one of them broken, which proved that Kimball did have a visitor shortly before his death. Well, that's what I said, remember? Somebody who drank tea and smoked cigarettes. Well, that lets me out. I ain't a tea drinker type. Uh, I don't smoke. You can ask anybody. It happens I'm not asking, I'm telling. All right, now, who killed Clayton Kimball? Well, Kimball himself left us some clues on this recording machine. He said that there were three suspects. The first was stealing from him and didn't want to be found out. The second became too important and was fired. And as for the third, this is what he said and became too friendly with my best friend. Hey, I forgot about that. Who was Kimball's best friend? Well, that's the answer to the whole affair, Lieutenant. And in just a few moments, I think we'll have that answer for you. Yes, Miss Kelly? Clayton Kimball's friend is out here. Oh, have the officers send them in. Hey, 
Just watch it, Chief. That dog might be a killer. No, Evans. There's our real killer, Kay Rogers. Yes, I killed him. I could stand his egotism because I loved him. When he tired of me, I couldn't take it. And that's why I double-crossed him, and that's why I killed him. <laughs> then the dog was Kimball's best friend. The dog was in the room at the time of the murder, and she's the only one with whom he's friendly. And it's just like Kimball said. She got too friendly with his best friend. That's why she was able to come to the house and let the dog out of the kennel the night I was looking for the contract. She hoped that he'd kill me. How about the double cross? That was the contract she negotiated with Lewis and Fraser by which the publisher got most of the money. That makes Mr. Lewis the friend who was stealing. And Goofy Madden is the friend who got too important. Hey, Chief. You said we had everything figured out but one thing. Now, what was that? The policeman said he saw a man leaping out of the window. Who was the man? The man. man. I got it. Miss Rogers in slacks. Good boy. I wonder if old Kimball still thinks us cops are dumb. Thanks for being with us. We're always glad to have you here on these cases. Mm -hmm.